Amen. Why don't we give God praise all over this place? Let's give Him praise. Come on, let's give Him praise all over this place. He is worthy to be praised. Amen. Today I really want to talk about something that's very dear to me to my heart. Learning to exercise God's given authority over your life. So many people are under living. What do I mean by under living? They have not learned how to exercise God's authority. We have the name of Jesus. But we have not applied that to pray. You know, I hope that you have been listening to the podcast about prayer. You know, I've been praying like crazy until I really don't have any more prayers to come. <laughs> you know, I was like saying, ah, can we talk about another subject? You know, because I've been praying like crazy, you know, and I'm beginning to see. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Say this, does the people now to exercise authority just like you do? I said, wow. Never thought of that. And today we're going to talk about exercising that authority. I'm telling you this. You know, God already has been healing people in our services. Sister Pauline, God has already touched you. Amen. She had a blood disorder and she went for medical checkup. Everything's normal. Come on, let's give God praise. Amen. Come on. Amen. Sister Sue won another testimony. She had migraine and now suddenly it's gone. I say again, this God that we serve is alive. He wants to heal. He wants to touch. He wants to heal the broken heart. Today you can get your healing. Amen. I'm not going to settle for anything less of just showing up and just show, uh, like punch my car. No, I believe that God wants to move in a miracle. And we need to exercise authority. Amen. I refuse. I, I've said this to the devil recently. I refuse to allow you to build a nest on my head and back my head all the time and have a fun time. We need to learn how to exercise authority. Don't you ever say we need to learn how to exercise authority? You want to hear one incredible story? It happened yesterday. Amen. We had three saints, Sister Shirley, Sister Alice, Sister Florence. Amen. They went to visit Brother James. Guess what happened? Let me, let me recap a little bit. Let me remind you, Brother James had throat cancer. When I look at him, well, how, how to pray this person through the Holy Ghost? How many of you ever thought of that? You know, I mean, he got throat cancer. He cannot yield himself to the Holy Ghost. Eh? Guess what? God filled him with the Holy Ghost yesterday. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, I don't know about you. I think it's time to give God the glory. I don't know what your issue is today, but I say there is an pouring that is happening. Come on, nothing is too difficult for my God. You know what? I also receiving a lot of reports that people get their promotions. People get, a, come on, I say this God that we serve is a great God. Amen. And I'm here to let you know that as Christians, it's not just showing up on a Sunday. It's exercising God's promises over my life. Amen. You know, Matthew chapter 12, verse 29. If you have your Bible, let's open there. And today we're going to do a lot of praying, a lot of anointing. Amen. We're going to lay hands. I'm going to be teaching about the doctrine of laying hands on people. Because there is a power that is imparted when we lay hands on people. Okay. Everybody say praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 12, verse 29. Amen. Here we go. Oh, sorry. Oh, how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? And then he will plunder his house. Amen. Notice this. We must bind the strong man. Bind the strong man of doubt, unbelief, can we just lift our hands right now? Father, we're going to break every chain of limitation right now. Come on, just leave your voice for a moment. You will do it again, Father. I release the gift of faith right now in the name of Jesus. 
Father, right now we take authority over every distraction. We take authority over every sickness. We take authority right now, God. Haraka over every unbelief right now. Go. You have no place in my life, in my family's life. Come on. In my children's life. Haraka sanari yarabadu raka sanara. Haraka sanari. Father, speak. Speak to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Let me remind you, we are dealing with a spiritual battle. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. First Peter chapter 8, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. James chapter 4 verse 7, therefore submit to God. Everybody say resist. The devil, he will flee from you. You see, the only way you can resist him is by the authority and the name of Jesus. John chapter 10 verse 10, the thief comes, sorry, the thief does not come except to steal, to steal your faith, to kill your joy and to destroy you. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 4, and no wonder for Satan himself transformed himself into an angel of light. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27, nor give place to the devil. Acts chapter 26 verse 18, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. There is an inheritance waiting for you. Amen. But we have to exercise authority to resist the devil. I can't resist the devil for you. Amen. So today we're going to learn a little bit about exercising our authority in Christ Jesus. Amen. Everybody say praise God. You may be seated. Let me remind you again. You know, a preacher once said this, the greatest lie of the devil is that he doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> let, me, let me repeat that again. The greatest deception that is happening in our world today is the devil is not alive anymore. We don't talk about spiritual warfare. I realize this. We don't talk about spiritual warfare as much as we should. And, and please don't misunderstand me. You know, I'm not the kind of person that when you fall down, <laughs> and they'll say, oh, there's a devil there. <laughs> you know, there's some, some people that every time blames the devil. I'm, I'm not talking about that. But having said that, I've seen with my own eyes that some things that is real, the devil attacks our mind all the time. He will put thoughts into you trying to destroy your family by asking you to be resentful first. Number one, Amen. Those thoughts that may not come. From, you see, when I talk to people, you know, they don't even know that they are being attacked by the devil. They don't even know. The Bible says we must exercise discernment. The, the, the matured people that exercise or, or train their discernment that not every thought that comes in between here is God. It's you. It can be the devil. You got, to be, you got to recognize that. Amen. Okay, you know when you get up, oh, all kinds of thoughts come to you. It may not from be your... It may not from, be from you. It may be from the devil. And we have to be, be people that discern that, that the Bible says that, that, that the, the devil is like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. And we need to exercise authority in the name of Jesus to cast out every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. Amen. Let me remind you again, okay? Everybody say praise the Lord. You're looking at me? I say again, let me remind you of the mission of the devil. Okay, you all with me? Sometimes we forget there is a devil. He has a mission, you know. Sometimes I wish uh, I can take some of these young people with me and I cast devils out. Then you realize that he is real. 
Amen. Everybody say, praise God. Then you will see that in the room, they become prayer warriors. Psychologists even believe that there's such a thing as demon possession because they talk about it. They say, while counselling people, we realise that our signs don't work with them anymore. They start to be very antagonistic about the things of God and it manifests into a different person. It's really illogical. But I'm here to say this. That, you know, every time we think about the devil possess, possessing us, we always think about portagize or, or, or exorcist. It doesn't need to look like that. It, it can speak thoughts into your head about each other, about getting resentful about something. Suddenly, you become so, so suddenly negative. That's a spiritual attack. That you need to take authority. You need to cleanse your mind. Amen. Everybody say praise God. So let's go quickly now because I've got things to do. Amen. And, and I've got to, to, to be praying for some of us to break and destroy the yoke. Amen. So the goal of the enemy, number one, to deceive and mislead. To deceive and mislead. Satan is often the, uh, 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 you know, uh, depicted as deceiver, one who misleads humanity away from the truth of God. His aim is to distort, confuse, obscure the truth and leading people into error away from God's will. Deception. You don't know who your enemy is. You know what? It may be something happened, then you think your enemy is your wife. Enemy is your children. You have to be careful. There is a demonic world that wants you to go after your loved ones and you have to be careful not to allow that to happen. Number two, to tempt and to lead you into sin. Temptation. Because once you sin, he's taken away your authority. Okay? Everybody say amen. Then again, number three, to steal, kill and destroy. We talk about that. Number four, to oppose God's plan. God has a plan for us. Amen. He's causing a lot of distractions so you will do your own will, do your own thing, and then find out that why did I waste my life for this thing? We have to be careful. Amen. And number six, to create division and strife. To create division in the home. Because you know what the Bible says? If a house is divided, it cannot stand. Amen. Number seven, to keep people in spiritual bondage. You know what spiritual bondage is? Basically, you are addicted to something. It may not be drugs, but you're addicted to this kind of thinking. Addicted to living a life of anxiety and fear. He wants to control you. He, as long as he can control you, he's got you. But we, as the people of God, must exercise authority. Amen. What can the devil do? Okay, first of all, temptation. Cause doubt and confusion, frustration, amen. And then he can put fear and despair. He can put division and strife. He can put physical and mental thought, torment, manipulation of sin, sickness, amen. Everybody say praise God. Okay, I'm going fast, okay. You know why? Because I have spiritual exercise to do today, okay. So you see, the devil is alive. I, I, I'm going to try this again. The devil is alive. Amen. Amen. And you need to know his aim. You need to know those voices that come to your head. Is it trying to destroy your faith? Is it trying to cause division? Is it going to cause all kinds of confusion in my house? If it is, I'm under attack. And I need to recognize that attack. You know, I have a house. Amen. And I can recognize if somebody comes in and says, I need to go to your house. You have no authority. Get out. As the gate is closed and I lock it, they can't do anything. But some of us, we don't even know. Hey, come, come, come. Come, come, come. Those thoughts that's running in our head. Come, 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 come. Come, 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 come. And you're dying with this negative thought. And you start to make this fantasy of what your created world looks like. You know who gives access to the devil? You. We have to be careful. Amen. So what is this thing called spiritual authority? It, it denotes a divine empowerment, right to govern and lead into spiritual matters. This authority comes from God and He established through His sovereignty and delegation as revealed in the Scripture. 
Amen. We need to exercise authority. Amen. Everybody say, praise God. Are you all with me here today? And, 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 and my question, okay, I, I, I write a few. I, I, I have 17 reasons why we don't exercise authority. 17, but I don't have time for that. If you all want, I can send you my notes. I'm going to cover a few that is very common. A lack of awareness and understanding. The Bible says that my people die due to lack of knowledge. And then here's a very important one, spiritual immaturity. We are just immature people, just reactive, exploding all the time instead of responding. You know, God never expected us to be thermometers, but God expects us to be thermostats. You know the difference? Thermometer tells you how hot it is immediately. Thermostat knows it's hot, cool down. There's a fan. The Holy Ghost is the fan. Cool down. Come. Be still and know that He is God. Jesus was a thermostat. He saw a storm. He calmed the storm. Everybody was panicking around Him. Because when you panic, your mind goes crazy. You lose the soundness of mind. You operate in fear rather in faith. Amen. You see, can I give you a word of encouragement here? If you can fear, you can have faith. Because fear is faith in the obstacle. Let me repeat that again. Fear is having faith in your obstacles. So you have faith in something. Amen. You just need to go back. How, how do I? The promises of God. That's why you study the Word of God, not for you to be Bible scholar. You study the Word of God so that you can pray the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost will bring a weakness to you. How many of you have felt the weakness of the Holy Ghost praying the prayers uh, this week? Thank you for three amen or four amen. I pray the word. Do you all notice that I pray the word of God into your life? That I have to somehow or other make it personal to you and talk about praying and, and not only trying to pray, but also being prayed to be prophetic in my prayer, saying that it is done. Amen. amen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not being seen. So I see in the spirit before I can lose it, things manifest in the physical. If you can't see the spirit, you will not manifest the spirit, uh, the, 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 the physical. It always begins with a vision. I mean, come on, it, it, it's just like this. You know, you buy a house, you have a vision of what your house looks like. <laughs> if you don't have a vision of what your house looks like, die. The contractor also can't help you. I say, what do you want to do? I don't know. That's what God says. What do you want to do? I don't know. God sometimes gets confused. Have you ever tried recording your prayer? I mean, God told me, do me a favor. Record your prayer. I recorded it. I listened. Do you understand? Then how do you think I can understand what you are saying? Because it's all religious, you know, uh, 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 jargon. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, you know, come on, let's move on. And what will you do? You pray the word. Amen. Have faith in the word of God, please. Everybody say praise the Lord. Come on, are you all with me here? Amen. Here, here's another thing. Uh, I'm going to jump down on my notes. If you all want this, give me a call. I'll send it to you. Okay. Uh, okay. Here's another one. I think it's very important for us in the 21st century. Okay. We over... It's point number 12, uh, but you don't need to show up there. I want you all to listen to me. Over-reliance of natural talent and abilities. Amen. When, when disciples depend more on their natural talents and skills and human wisdom than on God's power and guidance, they may neglect the need for spiritual authority. Their over-reliance can stem from a sense of self-sufficiency or pride in one's ability. Amen. We have to be very careful. There's so many times when I talk to parents, they say, oh, I read this book, I read this book, I read this book. I say, but have you tried taking authority in prayer in Jesus' name? Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh. Sometimes your children misbehave is because, you know what? They are being attacked by thoughts. Leh. Thoughts of fear. Mommy don't love me. You know what? I'm telling you, the devil can speak thoughts to our children. Leh. 
Amen. They start to, they start to suspect you. Like, everything you do, like, you know, you're like thinking, hey, I did this, hey, I did this. Why are you still like that? Why you still behave this way? Because the devil has spoken to your children. You have opened a door. It's time to close the door. It's time to re, it's time for your children to put on the girdle of truth. You know what's the girdle of truth? It's the full armor of God. It's put on reality, spiritual reality that we are in warfare. This is warfare. You know that? When we come into the presence of God, it's warfare. When we go to DCD, it's warfare. When we come, you know, in church, I don't, I don't know about you, come on, everybody say, we praise the Lord. But if you are going together as a family, sometimes got warfare. Thank you, everybody say amen. Uh, come on, everybody say amen. Some of your children still sleeping, say, come on, we got to go to church. Come on. I don't want to go. Warfare. Amen. You got to do something about it. You got to take authority in Jesus' name. Sometimes before you sleep, on the, the next day I take authority. God, I want my children to come with enthusiasm. After all, the word enthusiasm comes from the word entheos. That means anything to have to do with God is exciting. I don't know about you, but I believe that Christianity is exciting. Thank you for that overwhelming response. Come on. The Spirit has come to a point, anoint me to preach the gospel to set the captives free, to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's the kind of Christianity that I belong to. Not just sitting in the pews and then, oh, I see you, oh, you see me. Everybody say, Amen, Hallelujah, good music. No, we have to exercise authority. We need to go to our worlds and lay hands on people and believe God for His Word. Amen. That's the kind of power that I'm looking for. Amen. Everybody say, praise God. Then there's also a misunderstanding of what true power looks like. There can be a misunderstanding that natural talent or human effort is the primary driver for effective ministry and Christian living. While God uses natural abilities, the Bible emphasizes that our strength, effectiveness in spiritual matters comes from Him. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6 tells us, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you something goofy, okay? Don't look at me as if I'm weird. Everyone say amen. All the MQ people know one. Sometimes we call this, right? That our equipment sometimes all die at the same time. Nothing that we stand by, we buy equipment for, 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 for reinforcing and also cannot work. Like. Charles, amen? I pray for spiritual authority over our equipment. You know, I still remember Brother Schenker telling me, I, I don't get it. Everything just shut down in one go. Then they call me. I walk into the room. Everything turned on. Then Brother Schenker, Brother Schenker, if you're looking at this, right? I asked him, uh, to, to, am I right that you said this? And then Brother Schenker said, I, I give up. I don't know. What's this? What's this? Until you, 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 you see it, then you are a believer. Leh. There is spiritual authority. You know what the Bible says? When Jesus comes, right? He show up. His presence, right? He spoke as one of authority. That even devils try to leave, leh. They cannot stand, wow, this guy is a man of authority. I mean, imagine if you go to your workplace, all the devils run out already. Wow, praise God, amen. I mean, that's the kind of authority that I want. I don't want no, no devil to make a death on my head, saying that, oh, I'm no good. Oh, you will never, come on, I come that in against in the name of Jesus. You know, I can tell people whether they understand to exercise their authority by the way they pray. Some people begging God when some things don't need to beg God. Sometimes you exercise authority. When you pray for healing, lay hands on your children. Lord, I... No, the Bible says when Jesus prayed, He addressed that sickness. He take authority over that sickness. He command that sickness to go. That's exciting. That, that is exercising authority. I mean, the Bible says don't be double-minded. When you pray, you believe. Amen. Come on, everybody say, do you not know that life will be easier if you take authority? Thank you for three amens. And you can also take authority over financial matters in your life. Like. Thank you. Uh, I thought about financial, everybody become more alive. Huh? Tell me more. <laughs> Tell me more. I do believe that we can take authority over our finances. They ask God to help us. Amen. Everybody say, praise God. 
And also, you know, uh, a reason why we may not exercise our authority is neglect of the need of spiritual empowerment. In focusing on natural talents, there can be a neglect of spiritual empowerment through the Holy Spirit. That's why I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that if you have not received the Holy Ghost, you need to receive the Holy Ghost because it taps you into a new dimension. Amen. That you realize that I wrestle not against flesh and blood. Sometimes the best thing that I can do, sometimes, you know, uh, uh, we don't know what to do. We just pray in tongues. The Spirit of God will give us the utterance and things to pray for. Amen. That's why I'm so glad that I have this. Amen. This Holy Spirit that's living within me is real. Amen. That when I pray, I lay hands, I believe God to move. I need to exercise authority. I need to get on the, uh, you know what? I don't want anybody to have a wild time in my family. I exercise authority. Man, you should be praying for your family. You should be praying for a fire that is around your family that the devil cannot enter in because the Bible says that the strong man must be bound first. If the strong man is not bound, he can plunder your goods. I don't care what kind of education that you can have with your kids. He can walk in there, he can command sickness, and you're dead. He command rebellion, that's it. You can't do anything. Yeah, please don't misunderstand me that, 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 that it doesn't mean that you still don't have to love your children and have proper disciplining your children and, and parenting skills. That's, that, that is so, so needed. I, I guess what I believe, you need both. You need to be a good parent. Everybody say amen. Faith without works is dead. So you have faith by doing what the manual says. But the second thing is also you have to do spiritual warfare. Amen. This is real. Eh? Trust me, I know. I fought some big battles. Amen. Everybody say, praise God. Don't be so, you know what, again, some people are so skeptical about spiritual warfare, but I believe it's true because trust me, I've done all that I know of how to do it. It still don't work. Until I go down on my knees, go, how, Lord, how? What, how? <laughs> you know, and then I'm crying in tongues. I don't know what to do. I come to a place of prayer and intercession. Then suddenly I feel overwhelmed with His spirit and search and His energy. Then wisdom come. Wisdom comes, strategies come. You know what I'm telling you right now? I can say this for sure. The Bible says this, that we are, we are supposed to be, you know, standing against the wiles of the devil. You know what the wiles of the devil is? W-I-L-E-S. You know what it is? Let me tell you something. When you come into this thing called Pentecost, when you come to this thing called being filled with the Holy Spirit, you are a danger and a threat to Him. Because he's scared, no, ah, please, ah, please, ah. Tolong, I don't want him to know his identity in Christ Jesus. I don't want him to know the authority in Christ. Because if he knows his authority in Christ Jesus, I have a have problem. So you know what he do? He comes strategic means. He'll tell you, read more books, read more books, read, study more, study more, talk about this and that. And, and please, I'm not against studying about good parenting skills. But there are some things that I do know that no matter what communication skill you try, no matter what you do, still no use. You're also gentle, also no use. Amen. That you realize that there is a veil. That anything that you do cannot go in one there. It's like the pion, pion, pion. There's some veil there. You don't know why there. You're so nice, also touch pion. Like, like, like bounce back, whatever strength. You know why? Because the devil has a strategy against everybody here. He knows your weakness because he's been studying you. You know what I do sometimes? I pray, Lord, plead the blood of Jesus over my house so the devil can't see anything on the inside. Amen. Everybody say praise God. I, I, are you all with me here today? Amen. Okay. So, uh, you know, again, I want to quickly share right now there's a difference within having authority and power. Many of us are filled with the Holy Ghost, right? It's the power of God. Everybody say amen. God's power resides in you, but you don't have the authority to access that power if you don't know how to access it. Amen. One of the ways that, 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 that we assess the power is by using the name of Jesus. But we all cannot use it like a formula. Le. We must know who we are praying to. Le. When you talk about the name of Jesus, you must identify with His character, His essence, His everything. Le. If you only use it like a formula, like you become the sons of Skiva, where they just follow the formula, follow the formula and there's no faith in the name. There's no faith, not just in the name. Let me say, the faith in the God that has this name called Jesus. Amen. 
that you must understand, Brother Blow will be preaching about that. Next Sunday, I, I, I prophesy, amen. Now you know your message, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Why the name of Jesus is so important? I'll tell you after that lesson, right, I prophesy that people will just jump into baptism right away. Amen. Everybody say, praise God. Amen. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, it says, all authority has given to me in heaven and on earth. So what spiritual authority? Spiritual authority is, is in its essence uh, derived from the character and the throne of God. It's a delegated power to carry out His will on earth as it is in heaven. That means that when I have this authority, I can execute what God wants me to execute to see His will come on earth and it is in heaven. Heaven, there's no sickness. Thank you, are you <laughs> Ever there's no pain. So when I have this authority, I can enforce that in my life. In my season of my life, I can enforce that because I am a believer. And that authority first comes when you have this harmonious, harmonious relationship with the one who has that authority. And who's the person that has authority? Jesus. Okay? So, after you are born again, we go into two phases. I'm going to go quick because I don't have time for my notes. You will go into justification. That means He will impute righteousness upon you. Nothing that you deserve. Nothing that you earn. You know, when we talk about the word justification, right? When you have been born again of water and spirit, when you have been baptized in Jesus' name, the, it, it's just like, wow, you're a new creature. You're, you're, whatever you owe, no more. Clear that. Just as if you never sinned. Okay? But it is up to you then to continue the process of sanctification. That means being sanctified means that I want to become more like Christ now. I have to maintain the garden. Ma. It's not like God gives you this beautiful garden. Amen. Free of charge. You don't deserve it. <laughs> but you have to maintain that garden. You have to maintain your relationship. The more you maintain that relationship with God, the more authority you have in Jesus' name. The more authority, exercise authority in the spirit world. You can lay hands on the sick and can recover. Are, are you all with me here? It's a very simple one. Christianity, very simple. you okay with God. God gives you authority. Exercise it. You know, it's being born again. It's not about, you know, sometimes I think, oh, what kind of Christianity is this, man? Christianity is really about empowerment. One, eh? God gave us power so that we can be witnesses to the end of the earth. Eh? So then, you know what? When we declare His Word, very simple. Declare His Word in Bible study. You got sickness, let's lay hands. God manifests. That's it. So you know what? Empowerment. Get out there. Win the world for me. There's going to be battles. But I, you know, guess what? I have all authority. Just maintain your relationship with me. I'll give you that authority. That's all. So simple. That's why, you know what? I don't know why we reduce Christianity. Just sit at your seat and happy, lift up holy hands like that. Then you don't even have miracles in your life. I'd rather be religious than being, having a relationship with God. I'd rather come here. You know what? Folks, there's more. God wants to use you. You know what? He says, all authority I have. Go. Make disciples of what? All nations. Talk about a vision. You know what? God gave you authority now for you to go and pray. Oh Lord, give me chocolate candy. Uh, hello? God wants you to turn nations around. Amen. Come on. This gospel that I have is a powerful gospel. Do you know when it's no power? I'll tell you why. When we don't go and share the gospel. Are, are, are y'all with me here? So why is spiritual authority important? Spiritual authority is important because it means by which God's kingdom advances on earth. Through it, disciples can resist the enemy. God will be enacted in a temporal realm. Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says this, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt him. Amen. You know what it looks like? No, I'll tell you what it looks like in modern terms. It looks like espionage, spy person, go inside the enemy's territory and go like that. You know, invisible guy. Like, 
you know, you know, that kind of like, you just go in there, and then after that, they shoot you. Doo, 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 doo. Then you're like, doo, 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 doo. Tai Chi, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what it says. Eh? You can trample off the enemy. Eh? That means what? He's on the he's on below my feet. Eh? Why, why are we not leaving that? Come on. Now you know what I look like. Not the devil trample on my head. Eh? That's why you allow him to. Amen. Everybody say praise God. Amen. So how does one get, 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 get this authority? Very simple. Have us, have us. First of all, the authority is not yours. We are not coming in the name of Timothy Lee. We are neither coming in the name of Tabernacle of Joy. We are not coming in the name. That's why we, the name is so important. Because you know what? You know, that's why, you know, it's strange when you talk to people, why you pray in the name of Jesus, uh, everything in the name, eh, except baptism. Uh. Oh, by the way, oh, Father, Son, Father, Holy Ghost never died for you. Eh. He wasn't buried. Eh. Why suddenly the change? I, I saw oxymoron, right? Everything you pray in the name. But then when you come to baptism... Uh, and I'll tell you something, uh, there is a difference. Thank you for that. <laughs> it's a big deal. You know why? Because the, the Bible says the last day you will be persecuted for His name's sake. Leh. If it's not a big deal, why would I? Because you know what? I'll tell you why. Because the name represents His identity. And you've got an identity crisis here. If you don't know who your God is, it's a big deal. That's why the Bible says, he, you know what? He is the chief cornerstone. He didn't say the Father was the chief cornerstone. He said Jesus was the chief cornerstone. How about the Father and the Holy Spirit? Oh Lord, help us. You know what? When I know who Jesus is, <laughs> everything makes sense. You see, the Father was in the Son. The Spirit of God. God who is a spirit needed a body. He called that son. You know, when you see the son of God, you can put the word, the body of God. Because you know, without shedding of blood, there is no remission. God needed a body. So he borrowed from Mary. Mary, you know, I'm going to borrow your womb. I need a body because I got to shed blood for my people's sake. So, so Jesus was actually God of the Old Testament manifested in flesh. Very simple. Are you all with me? Come on. And then he, 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 he felt your temptation. Amen. I, I've always wondered this. This is a very, very important question that I have. Okay. You know, I always wonder, Lord, you love the world so much. If you don't understand the scripture, you, you think it from this point of view, then why do you send your only begotten son? And why you, you didn't come down yourself? I mean, it's just like this, okay? Uh, pretend you're my son and Jabez is my other son. I love my son so much. Now nah, you go down and go down and help him up. I tell you, no father in the right mind will do that. I say, I'll do it. My wife will testify to this. I'll do it. You all stay back. Go back. I'll do it. Because they are co-equal what? Huh? Hello? It's a big deal. Don't let anyone fool us. It's not a big deal. It is a big deal. That's why I've been singing this song. I know who I am. I know who I am. I know who I am. I am yours. Your, uh, what? I don't know. You are mine. <laughs> I was broken. I like the part. When you found me. Da, 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 da. Amen. You see. If you don't know who your father is, don't you think that you have an identity crisis? Hey, who's my father? Xiang? Are you my father? Come on! Everybody say praise God. Okay, I got to go real quickly. I, I, I just got to throw that. So, so the, the important question is this. What has this got to do with Glory. If we don't manifest, our ex we don't exercise the authority in the name of Jesus Christ, then we will not manifest His glory. We're just another religion. Amen. Come on, everybody say praise God. This is the real deal. Everybody say this is the real deal. 
You know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8 and 9 says, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, which is talking about Moses, Old Testament, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. So you know what? When God filled me in the Holy Ghost, watch out! The glory is coming. The glory is in me. The hope of glory is in me. Thank you, Brother David, for clapping hands. God is in me. Like, hello, you think it's a funny thing? Huh? My goodness, watch out! The, in this particular scripture, the Apostle Paul was saying that Old Testament is a ministry of death, ministry of condemnation. The Old Testament tells you, you know what? You're guilty. But the New Testament says, you know what? Jesus died on the cross. He was sacrificed. And now His Spirit lives within you. The hope of glory. I say the hope of glory. Isn't this more glorious? Don't let nobody take away that glorious experience that when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, that you reduce to something that is normal. Let me say this. Pentecostals. You know, we have received the Holy Ghost so long until we numb it. Like as if, why, well, Charlie, is there anything else? You pray in the Holy Ghost. You keep on praying in diverse tongues. You keep on praying and praying and praying until you say this, God, I cannot take it. This is status quo. I need to exercise authority, exercise authority over complacency, exercise authority over date down and boring. Because God is a God that is wanting to see great things happen in, on our earth before He returns. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Okay, 10 minutes more to go. Let me see where am I? I'm all over the place. I'm sorry. Okay, here comes something that is very important. So how do I impart this exercise authority? The Bible talks about the laying of hands. You know why I don't like this setting? Because it's very hard for me to lay hands on you. I have to climb. Okay lah, don't scare. I have to climb all the way to get after you. <sighs> after that, I tell you, I be bo bo I say, I lay hands. Maybe I lay on you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And this is a doctrine that Brother Willoughby always tells us to lay hands on people. And again, when you lay hands on people, you lay hands using your right hand. Or if you are a left-hander, you use your left hand. Are, are you all with me? And sometimes when you lay on hands, okay, it's a company with the anointing oil. I'm going to put a lot of this anointing oil. You know what this anointing oil is? a symbol of faith. Amen. When I anoint you with oil, I believe that it's a symbol of the Holy Spirit coming upon you, touching you. Amen. Everybody say praise God. Amen. Don't worry, I will not baptize you in anointing. I will only baptize you in water. But I will not take the oil like the Old Testament. Uh, they anoint uh, uh, David. No, he take the oil. Uh, then boy, oh, just like, you know, just everything down. Like, oh, running down the rope. Oh, thank God. You know, and also very expensive. Like, hey, man. So, so again, so what's the purpose of laying on? And I'm just teaching you, especially when you're a new convert in Tabernacle of Joy, going back to basic 101. The Bible says laying of hand is for consecration and commissioning. Amen. The laying of hands often signifies setting apart someone for a specific work or ministry. Amen. In, in, third, in Acts chapter 13, verse 2 and 3, tells us, says, They ministered to the Lord, fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed, lay hands on them and they send them their way. Okay. Okay, so we, so we lay hands for a specific purpose, for a special assignment. Everybody say assignment. Then we also lay hands for healing. Amen. Because in the Bible says, Mark chapter 6 verse 5, and he could do mighty work there. He could not do mighty works there because the people did not have faith except that he lay hands on a few sick people and healed them. Mark chapter 16 verse 17 and 18 says, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything daily, accidentally, understand, like accidentally, not purposely when drinking one and thank the Lord, Oh, Lord, help me. Hey, the Bible says, oh, drink anything yeah, yeah, daily, so I go and drink, oh, then die. Don't tempt the Lord. Hey, amen. <laughs> okay, and then after that, it goes on, and it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. 
So when we lay hands on you, we anoint you with oil. It's an impartation of faith. Amen. Have you ever noticed this? When you read the scripture, there are times right there is faith in the house of the Lord. And Jesus did not need to lay hands on them because they believe already. Said, Lord, just say the word. And then you can give the word of faith. And it's done. But then there are some people struggle. So this is where the laying of hands comes in. It's like, you know, you just imagine uh, this, this guy who has no eye socket for many years. Eh. For Jesus, right, he, he knows that this guy don't have faith. So many years, no eye, no socket. Eh. How to receive your blind eye? I mean, so many years, eh. you know what Jesus did? Jesus go on the ground, he went and take one mud and went turn it to a ball and pluck it in the eye. You know what that instilled? Faith. When I lay hands on you, you better make sure. Listen very carefully first. If I lay hands on you, better make sure that something's going to happen. Don't ask me to lay hands on you. And I'm going to talk about that. The Bible says don't lay hands on people hastily so, or suddenly. You have to be very careful how you lay hands on people. If the person don't receive you, don't pray for them. And you've got to be very careful that you pray suddenly. You don't know that person. That's why again, I'm going to open up the place for prayer. You know, but don't lay hands suddenly on people. I mean, there's one time I lay hands suddenly on my wife. I don't know whether y'all saw this, but I think brother Eric saw it. Okay? You know, she was like worshipping God and I never go and tell her. You know, my wife very scary cat one. And then she was worshipping like that. Then I lay hands on her suddenly. Yeah! And then she go, ah! <laughs> Amen. You, whatever you do, you've got to be very careful. You know, even ask permission. The hate for a Chinese and for an Asian culture, if I'm not mistaken, even Indian, is a very sacred place. Don't any rub. I mean, come on, man. You don't see anybody go in the shopping mall, rub your face. Hey, bro, hey, give me a five. No, let me rub your head. <laughs> Come on. I know my wife will get very upset if I lay hands on her and touch her. This one, what do you call this? The glory. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> when I touch her, I say, hey, don't touch my glory. Eh. <laughs> I say, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, still, still glory. I can turn a little bit. I, I do, I sayang for you. Then I do more sayang, more messy. I, I run away. <laughs> You know, again, please, you got to be very careful. Express. You know what? I, I always say this. You know, all of us got our space there. Eh? Everybody say amen. Uh, uh, Peter, come, come. <laughs> I love Peter. Everybody say, I love Peter. <laughs> Just imagine. <laughs> you think comfortable or not? And I don't know you, leh. Please, how to receive anything from you? I say that you better stay away if you come near, I punch your face. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, uh, there's one time I came so close to my son, he don't know what to do. Oh, I, I know why now, because I brought a lizard next to him and then he was so scared, he punched my face. Oh, Lord, help me. I'm trying to catch. Yeah, thank you, uh, Brother Peter. Amen. And, and, and also another thing that's very important when we lay hands on people, we should do this, for, by the way, we need to lay hands on our children and bless them. Amen. We should practice this. Amen. We should bless them. And, and, and please, kids, I know it's not a cool thing. La. Who likes to be lay hands on? Hey, my hair, no, I gel, I hair dry in my hair. You want blessings? The Bible says that, you know, uh, uh, parents, you, you, you bring blessings. You know, uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 16, and he took them up in his hands and laid his hands on them and blessed them. This is Jesus blessing them. Amen. I, 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 uh, you know what, parents, you, if you know your, 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 your children, right, very particular about you touching their hair, bless them before they comb their hair. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. And, and then also, this one is my favorite. It's called the impartation of the Holy Spirit, praying for people to receive the Holy Spirit. Peter and John lay hands on every believer in Samaria. Then they lay hands on them and they receive the Holy Spirit. That's why we ask people to come down so that we can pray for you to receive the Holy Spirit. And please, don't need to put your weight on the person's neck until the neck breaks. Like. And put one hand. Nah. Don't put five hands. Eh. Come, come, oh, you, uh, uh, come uh, uh, Tian Chen, Elvin and uh, Asher, come. You again, brother. 
The Bible says, lay on hands, not many hands. Eh? Come, let's lay hands on him. <laughs> Give him a space. Lah. Amen? I mean, come on. People got their dignity, eh? especially Singaporeans. Ah. Because we all live so close, ah. our spatial oh, is very close one. Eh? Okay? American worse. Eh? American got so much space. Ah. They, are, they are spatial. If I come across, hey bro, <laughs> you're crossing my territory. I'll blow your mind. Move back. <laughs> Amen. You got to be careful. Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. Come on. <laughs> okay? Y'all love me? Amen. I'm teaching y'all some doctrine of laying on hands. And then another way that we lay hands on is we activating the gift of the Spirit. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 16 says, uh, uh, the apostle Paul exhorts Timothy, therefore I remind you to stir up the gift which is in you through the laying on my hands. And impartation of, of, of authority, you know, in Numbers uh, chapter 27, verse 18 to 23, take Joshua, the son of Nun, with you, a man in whom is the Spirit, lay your hands on him. Amen. And guess what we're going to be doing now? Okay, I'm done. Praise God. I believe in miracles. <laughs> Amen. 11.30. Okay, what we're going to be doing is very simple. We're going to exercise this. You know, we, we know that uh, DCD is coming. Amen. We're going to be anointing, especially those people in ministry. Amen. They're going to serve the Lord. Y'all don't believe, right? 11 30 or eh? Cool, right? Very fast, huh? One hour, I'm done. But now we're going to exercise authority. Amen. We, I'm going to ask my board members, come, board members to come. We're going to be anointing. We're going to have what we're going to be doing is this. You all know this. We're going to have a prayer line. And we were anointing all the different ministry. And brother, brother, uh, what's his name? Brother. Peter James is going to call those that are especially a part of the DCD committee and we're going to anoint them. I want us to stand to our faith, you know. Amen. Okay, we're going to exercise our faith. You heard about the laying of hands and now we're going to be uh, praying for all these different ministry. By the way, I, I don't know how to tell you this. I feel that DCD is such a crucial meeting. Come on, everybody say Amen. Come on, let's start. Let's, let's, let's hear me out a little bit. DCD will be spiritual warfare. Amen. We've been praying. I don't know about you, but by the look at some of your face, you haven't list, been listening to the podcast. I, I urge you. You're not just listening to a message. You are agreeing with me in prayer. If you don't know how to pray, just say, Amen. Lord, I don't know what pastor is saying. Amen. Sometimes I also don't know what I'm saying. Too tired already. Amen. Amen. You try recording uh, for a few hours. Uh, you see how much you go. I say, I, I, and I, I just cried there. I stood there and said, Lord, I hope I'm making sense. Really, I need you. I need you to tell the people that we need to exercise our authority as the people of God. I want you to be blessed. Everybody say, Amen. But you have got to exercise your authority. Everyone is given a measure of faith. Don't say that your prayers don't mean anything. No, it's, it's not about how well you pray. It's about His name. Amen. For His name's sake. You know what? I don't have faith in my prayer, but I have faith in the God to whom I pray to. Prayer is just a tool. And we're going to lay hands on, 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 on a few people right now. We're going to be asking uh, Peter to call them up. Peter, where are you? Okay, why don't you call them out first? First of all, let's invite all the departmental heads to come down.
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's give God the praise and the honor that's due His name. Come on, let's give Him praise. But we also do not want to forget praying for our equipment. Amen. Sometimes we pray for all the people we forgot to anoint our equipment. You know, I did tell, why don't we just have all the different people touch their equipment right now. Come on, just lift our hands right now. Touch our equipment. Father, anoint this equipment. Lord, this equipment is for your kingdom and for your glory, God. Let it play only, God. Lord, sounds of, of Lord. Lord, let it not break down, God. Just like in the days, God, where Moses, God, God, they were in the wilderness, God, but you protected, Lord, their equipment. You protected, Lord, their, 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 their shoes, God. You protected every, we dedicate, God, everything for your kingdom and for your glory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God praise all over this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands all over this place. Pastor's going to pray for you. Father, by the authority given to me as a man of God right now, I pray, God, that, Lord, Lord, if we are going, but if we cannot go, God, I pray, God, that there will be a manifestation and move of the Holy Ghost that will come upon your people. Lord, right now, Lord, from the front all the way to the back, Lord, right now, God, Lord, that you turn, Lord, every heart and heart, Lord. Lord, let it turn to a flesh, God, right now. We pray your kingdom come. We pray your will be done, Lord, right now. Lord, I pray that no one will get sick during this, this few days, God. I pray, God, that no COVID, God, let, let the place, God, be COVID-free. Let it be free of flu, God, right now. Lord, I, I lose your Lord. Lord, you're anointing over this group of people right now. Touch your neighbor next to you and pray right now by the authority and the name of Jesus. I lose healing. I lose soundness of mind. Lord, I come against fear. I come against anything that's trying to hinder us, God, to enter into your presence. Lord, that we will get our breakthrough, that we'll get, Lord, a demonstration of miracle signs and wonders right now. Come on, receive it in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you will destroy every yoke the devil has placed upon your people. Destroy it in the name of Jesus. Lord, I lose financial breakthroughs. I lose financial breakthroughs. 
Araka sandari arabato raka sandari arabato raka sandada. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give God the praise. Let's give Him all honor. One last thing that I need you to do. One last thing. Can you pray for me and my wife? We'll be heading to the Manila on Monday. We'll be doing PI. We'll be doing a few other stuff. So pray for us as we uh, go to this land of Manila. Amen. Brother Sam, would you pray for us? Come, let's stretch for our hands right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we want to pray for Pastor and Sister Weya as they go forth to minister, God, in the Philippines. God, we pray in Jesus' name. Loose your angels to go before them. Loose, oh God. Lord, a hedge of protection over them and their families. We plead the blood, oh God. And Father, we pray for an anointing, oh God. When they step into the country, oh God, Lord, the doors will open, God. Lord, that any yokes, any chains will break. Lord, when they speak, oh God, let it be a spirit of vision and prophecy that will be loose, oh God. Lord, that you will use, oh God, your ministry, God. Lord, to cause, oh God, to be an awakening in the land of Manila, in the land of Philippines. In the name of Jesus, God, send them forth, oh God, with power. Send them forth, oh God, with your authority. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, God, and we believe, God, that you did begin a good work in that nation. You will complete it, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Come on, let's thank the Lord right now. Amen. Amen. This is what it means to be apostolic. We lay hands on people, we pray for them. And when I lay hands on people, I expect things to move in the Spirit. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm expecting things to move in the Spirit. Amen. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Wave your hands. Amen. Father, we give you all the glory, all the praise. You deserve it. Lord, again, God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for a group of people. Lord, bless them today in Jesus' name. We are in day 35. Okay? Five more days to go. Everybody say five more days to go. But let me give you an instructions here a little bit. After the five days, doesn't mean you let go everything. Left. You know, uh, I remember Brother Stone King said this to me. He said, Brother Tim, remember this. Uh, it's harder to build something up. It's so easy to tear down something. Amen. So again, you, you, you know, some of these prayers that I've been praying, especially today and tomorrow, we pray for children. You can always go back to the podcast and pray for your own generation. Amen. Don't stop there, you know, because the last few days have been prayed, right? How many of you have been blessed by the prayers? You know, I don't know whether you're listening or not. Never mind, I don't want to see. <laughs> but you know, if you are having a hard time to pray, just pop in there and say, I agree with Pastor. I pray over my children. I pray over their children, children. I pray over my grandchildren, whatever that you need to pray. Because the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And when the voice goes out there, you must have faith. That's when I pray, I expect. Because you know what? I'm a believer. All authority is given to me by Christ Jesus Christ. I need to exercise that authority. Amen. Thank you for this spiritual exercise. Don't you feel good? You know, this is what we are. That we lay hands on the sick, we pray for people. You know, our hands are very oily now, especially my hand. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. So much oil, if you all want me to pray for you, please. Not that I want to get rid of my oil, but if you need a miracle, I can pray for you. Amen. That God, you know, the Bible says, call for the elders and let them anoint you with oil. And they will pray. The prayer of 